reset. The first part we had was looking at when money failed. The second part we had, we tried to understand what money is. And today we are going to discuss money and the heart. Before we begin, I want to make our announcements. So first, just to thank Bafunde for the support they have given this program, for their consistency and their dedication to the program. I want to say thank you. Second, as always, subscribe to our channel and please share the content. We develop these videos for just the edification of our Christian work. And now um, let's pray. Father in heaven, as we begin, I pray that you will go ahead of us, that our discussion will be beneficial, simple, so that even a child can understand. And most importantly, that it will awaken in us a desire to study more, and to know you better. Be with us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today I will invite our guests to introduce themselves. I'll start with my sister. Okay, my names are Sheila Mawele Ozoro. Thank you. And our brother? I'm Peter Matoke. Thank you. So I will invite uh, Peter to start. It's Sheila to start. Sheila, yeah. Okay, so today we are looking at the subject money and the heart. So what comes into the mind when you talk about money and the heart? Magoma, are we talking about the heart that pumps blood? Or which heart are we talking about? The, the, mind. the mind. The mind, yes. So when you look in the Bible, when it is using heart and mind, these words are, are interchanged. Mm -hmm. So today we are looking at money and the heart, which means the mind. So I want us to go through this uh, money and the heart prayer free because every one of us at least for us to earn a living we need money so we are going to start with a question does the bible have anything to say about money uh, yes. that is the question yeah. yes it does what about the great reset about money or the great reset mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so we are going to go into our bibles and we are going to study the word of second peter chapter 1 verse 19 to 21 but i'm just going to read the last two 20 and 21 it says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old in old days by the will of men but holy men of god spake as they were moved by the holy ghost so we are we are going to use our bibles to filter the current events mm -hmm. so we are going to use the bible to know where we are in the timeline of history we are not going to use the events to read us to the bible but it is the bible that is going to tell us where we are i like verse 19 where it says that we have a more sure, sure word, word of prophecy mm -hmm. whereon to we do well that we take Mm -hmm. that we take heed, that we are not uh, lost or we are not left to figure things out by, by ourselves here. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So when you look at 19, that was verse 19. Mm -hmm. It is telling us that this word that we have, the Bible or the prophecy that are happening or the prophecy that are yet to happen or those that happened, we have a more sure word of prophecy, mm -hmm. which is guiding us day by day, each and every time. 
So when we look in the spirit of prophecy, Great Controversy, page 598, paragraph 1, it says, He has a chart pointing out every way mark on the heavenward journey, and he ought, and he ought not to guess at anything. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this quotation and what we read in, uh, in, in the book of Peter, we see that God has given us the Bible as our chart. When we study the Bible, and then when we look at what is happening in the world, we are able to marry what is happening and what is in the Bible. Because God has given us these words so that we can know what we expect. He has not left us in perfect darkness. He has given us the sure word of prophecy and he has given us a chart. That's why when you read the book of Psalms 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto, unto my feet. So this is the lamp that sure, we sure. have. So um, before we go on, I think it's, it's just a good uh, place to stop and say that this is the, one of the beautiful things about Christianity, mm -hmm. that when we look around and it looks like there, there is chaos, there is chaos in the world. We mm -hmm. look around and it looks like um, everything is going wrong. You know, mm -hmm. it is not Europe, it is not Australia, everything, there is mayhem everywhere. We don't need to panic. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be confused that we have a more sure word of prophecy. And if we develop a relationship with God and if we become friends of God, then we have a light that we can follow through the darkness that is in the world. Yes, that's very true. True, true. Yes, and when you look at the Bible, you see the Bible because it is our, our chart. It is the one that is going to guide us. And did the Bible guide the children of Israel? The answer is yes. So when you read the book of First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, you find that the children of Israel, there was this group of the children of Issachar who used to understand the time. They would understand the time and then they would tell the children of Israel what to do. So the children of Israel, they knew their duty, but for the understanding of time, it's the children of Issachar that God gave that gift. So you find out that when time came, they would give them the time, they would tell them this is what is happening, and then the children of Israel, they will know their duty, they will know what to do, because time regulates everything. Like right now, we are not wearing clothes that we wear when we are going to sleep, right? Totally. Yes, because we are not going to sleep to, to go to bed right now, but when you are going to bed, you are going to wear the bed clothes, Cindy, or the night dress and everything. And when you're going for work, you are going to work to, to wear the clothes that you wear, you wear when you're going for work. So this time regulates everything. So now we have to understand, we have to marry the two between time and what? Heart and money. Because money is going to regulate what you're going to do with it. We've seen when people get money, most of the time you find that if this person used to love coming to church, they used to sing, they used to love the word of God. When they have money, what happens? Mm -hmm. They relax a bit. They will find that they will start coming late. They have so many programs. They are so many, they are engaged everywhere. So they don't have time for God. But now we, we have to see that even money, it's a blessing from God. So when we read the book of education, page 178, paragraph three, it says, the history which the great I am has marked out in his word, uniting link after link in the prophetic chain from eternity in the past to eternity in the future, tells us where we are today in the procession of the ages. So we are seeing that the spirit of prophecy is supporting what? The Bible, what we read in Peter telling us that the history that God has given us. And here I want to give an example. God has given us this history that we find in the book of Daniel. When you read Daniel chapter 2, you find that King Nebuchadnezzar, he was not even a Christian. He was a heathen king. But God used him to show the history that is even affecting us now. Sure, sure. So when, when he drained that statue, you see that... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar could not understand and even forgot the dream. This is in Daniel 2. Yes, mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 2, it is talking about the, God, the, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had. And because the great I am, 
knew that that history we need to know it and he gave it to a heathen king and daniel we see daniel coming in and interpreting all that he said to him telling him that you nebuchadnezzar you are the head of god so god has put you at this time in history to do his will and we see that nebuchadnezzar will be in heaven yeah, because sure. of who because of because daniel, of daniel. Mm. so you see that the history which the great I am has marked out in the word uniting link after link. That is a very good example when you look at Daniel chapter 2 because it is link after, after link, link after link. So you're going to see the head, which is Babylon. Then you're going to see the chest, chest and the and hands, hands Medopesia. You're going to see Greece. You're going to see Papa Rome. You're going to see the divided kingdom. Everything has been marked out until the second coming of Jesus Christ. In its order. In its order. And all that is supposed to all that is yet future will surely happen yes. just like all that has passed yes. has happened and the last part there it says that uh the history and we we may be assured that all which is yet to come will fulfill in its order because whatever god said in daniel chapter 2 already Almost three quarters has happened. We are just remaining with a time bit. So we cannot doubt that the time bit is not going to happen. What are we talking about? Okay, let's continue. We are talking about this chart. So when you look at this chart, it is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. This is a chart that is starting from 1844. Mm -hmm. Someone will ask a question. Maybe this is the first time seeing this chart. Maybe you are not even an Adventist, but by God's grace, you've come across this channel and you are just watching this video. When you look at this chart, it is starting in 1844 because in October 22nd, October 1844, the group, there was a group that was waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. They were called the Miralites. So they were waiting. They, they knew that on 22nd October, Jesus Christ was coming. And he did not come. And it was called the great disappointment. And God reviewed something on that date. That he moved from the holy place to the most holy place. So, the sanctuary of, the above. Sanctuary. of the heavenly sanctuary. So this is where now we are picking it up from. So when you look from 1844 to NSL. What is NSL? That is National Sunday Law. From 1844 until the time that the National Sunday Law is going to be passed. It is called the preparation time. This is the time that we need to prepare ourselves. We need to make our houses in, hot, in order. Because if we do, not, we do not prepare now, when the National Sunday Law will be passed, it will be too late for us to prepare. So when you're looking at the church, this time is a militant. It's church militant. The church has not yet triumphed. That's why you're going to see that there are a lot of problems in all the churches, not only in Seventh-day Adventists, but in all the churches, we are going to see that they are having challenges, more especially in the church where the truth is. So you are going to find that this is a church militant and this is a preparation time. And what is happening in heaven? It is judgment of the dead. So we see that from 1844, judgment of the dead started. And then when the Sunday law is going to be passed, there are events that are going to happen. And this is now going to be uh, trouble is coming. Like when you look at 1844 to NSL, there's uh, trouble coming on the earth. And now we are seeing that already we can test that trouble. But and part of the trouble is this trouble that is coming. Because Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, it is telling us that a time is coming that there will be a time of trouble such such as never was since there was a nation. So there's more trouble that is coming. So when you look at from NSL to close of probation, that is trouble is going to increase. Um, just before we go on, yes, I want to stop at this time and say, if this is the first time you're hearing these things, or if you have never really taken a keen interest to study about these things, it really sounds like a mouthful. And it sounds like we're using words like the church militant and the judgment of the dead and we're just throwing out all these phrases this is an invitation to study so if you are finding that perhaps it's a little overwhelming give us two minutes we'll be done with this but this is the offer we're making put your name put your number in the um chat what is it called yeah, the, the, thing at, the thing at the bottom yes in the, in the conversation uh one of us is there one of the members of the comms on one will be there 
just is there just uh, write out your number or even just put it and say i would like a study on this particular topic and then we will reach out to you um and then just to to demystify some of the terms mm -hmm. time of trouble is what is time of trouble just to demystify that because it sounds very ominous you know it's a time of trouble okay yeah just to demystify it a little and then we can pick up from national sunday law between the national sunday law and the close of probation just a bit the, the time of trouble I, I she has even gone there in daniel chapter 12 verse 1 it points out maybe read for us okay daniel 12 verse 1 it says and at that time shall michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time the, thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book so to just expound on that. just to just, uh, to just expound on that this time of trouble is the time of uh, which god will pour out the plagues mm. upon the seven last plagues upon the people who will have received the mark of the beast and that is actually a very major component in this great reset the great reset like you can see at the church trouble coming to the earth just below the words mm -hmm. preparation time mm -hmm. we are supposed to prepare this is the time to prepare so that we do not receive the mark of the beast mm -hmm. and then the increase the trouble increasing between nsl and cop national sunday law and close, and of, close of yes, yes. <laughs> between those two mm -hmm. that is now the time of trouble daniel 12 1 speaks of that time mm -hmm. yeah and just to just to clarify what we mean by trouble this is a series on money essentially yeah. so linked with the time of trouble are things like inability to buy and sell linked with the time of trouble is uh, challenges with employment mm -hmm. is uh, in the world physically there will be earthquakes and, mm -hmm. and that's what we are seeing already happening yeah the climate change climate and change stuff and things mm -hmm. like that so again um we invite you if you would want to study more it about will be a, it will be a time of a lot of confusion yeah. people won't understand and it is slowly mm -hmm. taking an increase and a crescendo mm -hmm. from this uh, pandemic that we are having mm -hmm. and People look at this pandemic as something so big, so but there is much greater trouble coming ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we was I was saying if you if you would be interested in studying about this, just contact us in the in the chat and then we will we will reach out to you. So now back to the time between the National Sunday Law and, and the, the close, close of, of probation. probation. So during that time, there will be things that will, will happen. And as you've seen, there's final shaking, sealing, rattling, there's other sheep matthias and this is now the judgment to move as you've seen the first one from 1844 to national sunday law it was judgment of the dead now from national sunday law to close of probation it will be judgment of the living and the state of the church will be church triumphant that's why the preparation time is between 1844 and national sunday law so we have to prepare as the children of god we have to make sure that our lives are in tune with heaven. How is it that we are using the money that God has trusted in our hands? Because money is a trust. It is God who has blessed us with that money. What are we using it for? Yeah. And as we are having the a physical preparation, yes. then there also must be a corresponding mm -hmm. spiritual preparation. True. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we should not ignore any of the two. Mm -hmm. As we are preparing physically, we should also prepare spiritually. Yes. So when you look at that, then it is saying a little time of trouble. And then there you see a strange word called country living grow on food. So when you are looking at between National Sunday Law and close of probation, there is there's something that has come up. The country living message. So it is telling us that during this time, it will be very difficult because when the Sunday law is passed, there'll be no buying, no yes. selling. That is what Revelation 13 tells us. People won't buy, they won't sell. So if you've not received the mark of the beast, you cannot go to any mall or to any supermarket to buy. Mm. So you need to be somewhere where you can grow your own food because Ellen White in the book called Country Living, she said that, the problem of buying and selling will be a serious one. So when it says serious one, meaning imagine you have a, lit, a, a young one 
and then they don't understand about these things they want to eat and you're in the city even you even, even you, you yeah. yourself you're you hungry you want many to people, eat many people will receive the mark of the beast because of their children yes daddy i need food yes now what, what do, you do you do yeah in fact mm -hmm. in fact it says for the want of food and shelter mm -hmm. many will receive the mark of the beast for the want they know the truth but because the stomach is begging it's pleading for the want it is demanding for the want of food and shelter many will receive or will yield to the mark of the beast so we were discussing on our way here mm -hmm. if you, know, if you yes. recall how we were saying that there are uh, parallels between what's happening now and what will happen then mm -hmm. and i just remember when you talk, when you spoke about not being able to go into into a mall to yes buy food. yes it's interesting that in the media right now if if you have not um been vaccinated, if you're not fully vaccinated you're not fully vaccinated mm -hmm. that the the there was a time there were circulars going around that you can't go into the mall mm -hmm. so just to be clear we are not saying that the vaccination is the mark of the beast that's mm -hmm. not what we are saying mm -hmm. but we are saying that there are interesting parallels, parallels. yes yeah. yes so when you look at that that's why as children of god the bible says we have to be as wise as a serpent, serpent and, and as humble as, as a dove so when you see things happening we have to be wise we are seeing that this trouble that is coming we need to start preparing that's why this time is preparation time so when you look at from close of probation and the second coming of jesus christ you are seeing that now is the church victorious because now the church has has been purified all the all the tears are out they are only wheat very you know, I have, I, I recall, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's uh, something we could talk about briefly, that when there is no persecution, then you have wit and tears. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as long as there is persecution, as long as you have to stand for your faith and potentially die for your faith, mm -hmm. then the church does not have wit and tears. Yes. The church is, is, is sifted. There was sifting somewhere. A final shaking. Final yes. shaking. Shaking. Mm -hmm. That is actually what happens after after National Sunday law is passed. Mm -hmm. So that is now the test for the that is judgment for the living. Actually, mm -hmm. you pass, you you do your test, you pass mm -hmm. by saying no, I'll not receive the mark of the beast. I'll stand firm for the for the Lord. Yes. So when you are looking at all those things, when the close of probation and the second coming of Jesus Christ, you are seeing the seven last plagues. Mm -hmm. That is trouble now. People will run to the mountain. Yes. They don't want to see the great I am who is seated on the throne. Mm. And then after the seven last plagues, then you're going to see Jesus coming in the clouds. Mm. So this chart, it is pointing us, it is a chart that is giving us the way marks. Way marks to heaven. So when you're looking at the pandemic that is happening right now, in fact, it is called a dress rehearsal. Because whatever is happening right now, the way things are, the way people are being pushed to the corner. These are the same the things, governments, the, the governments of these worlds, the people who are condemning the, 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 the un, unplicked, that you are the people, you are the cause of all these problems. These are the same things that are going to happen. Because when you look at what is happening in Australia right now, this, the people, I saw an interview whereby people were saying that, yes, let them be locked out because they are the problem. Even the National Sunday Law, by the way, when you read, it is the people who are going to demand it. It is going to come from the people and the government will just pass, pass it. Mm -hmm. So the same things that we are seeing now, this is a dress rehearsal. So we have to ask God to wake us up. It's interesting how the, there are two acrimonious sides, you know. So like in America, mm -hmm. the people who have not taken the vaccine, mm -hmm for whichever reason, are anti-vaxxers. Mm -hmm. And then the people who have taken it, for whatever their reasons might be, are sheep. Mm -hmm. You see, so we have these two very polarized um, groups. groups. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because at the end, when we come to the point of the, of, uh, the enforcement of the Sunday law, mm -hmm. then it will still have two polarized groups. There will be one group saying that, that you are the problem. Mm -hmm. And then because they are a majority, you know, then they will rally together to, to push out this offending minority mm -hmm. yeah okay so and then when you come to the book of isaiah 46 you see because we are looking at what is happening and we are looking at the bible 
So the Bible says in Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10, and I'm going to read, it says, Remembering the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none, none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So God is assuring us that whatever we are going to go through, whatever trouble or whatever difficult we are passing through right now, one thing we need to remember, that there's a God in heaven who is still seated at the throne mm -hmm. and is still giving, is still holding on the winds of strife. So even if you are passing through many challenges, especially during this pandemic, hold on to the great I am. Amen. And when you look at verse 10, it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient time, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So this is the assurance that God is giving us, that he's declaring the end from the beginning. God knows where all this is tending. So we need not to guess at anything. That's why the quotation that we read in GC 598 paragraph 1, it was saying that we have a compass or a chart, which is our Bibles. And God is saying that he has shown us all these things in the Bible. If we can only ask the Spirit of God to open up our understanding and to guide us, we are going to see you're going to just mark that, oh, this is what the Bible said. Oh, this is what the Bible said. Oh, so this is falling in place. Oh, this is falling in place. But if we don't study our Bibles, we'll be shocked. Mm. When the lockdown comes, we say, oh, Jesus is coming tomorrow. Mm. No. But when we study our Bibles, we even know at which point Jesus is coming. Mm. True. Okay. So even in the book of Mark, it is telling us the same. Because the book of Matthew chapter 24 it is Jesus Christ who was telling his disciples what will happen, the destruction of Jerusalem and his second coming. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the signs that he gave, he said, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So Jesus saw, he was giving them the prophecy. Right now we are having, what is a pestilence? Mm -hmm. If I may ask a question, mm -hmm. a pestilence is not a disease that is just in Kenya. It's not a disease that is just in America. A pestilence is a disease that is worldwide. And as we have seen, COVID, widely spread. Yes, there are more diseases that are yet to come. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that Jesus told his disciples that these are the things that are going to happen. And when these things happen, verse 8 is saying, all these are the beginning of so this is not the end it is what the, the beginning. beginning of sorrows and then 20, verse 8 and verse 9 says they shall they, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall 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 kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake so you are seeing that between verse 8 and 9 there's something that has happened there sure. because jesus is talking about when we see the earthquakes the pestilences nations against nations right right now we are seeing what is happening in ukraine not so mm -hmm. yes we are seeing ukraine there is a lot of uh tension there that all the world they are focusing there i think uh even the news has changed a bit the pandemic has been silenced kidogo because of what is happening in Ukraine. So you see that nations are angry against each other. And then when that happens, they see, then this is the beginning of sorrow. Then verse 9 is telling us that what is going to happen, they shall kill you. How? There's something, there's an event that has happened between 8 and 9, which is going to bring the killing and the hatred of all nations. That is the national Sunday law. So we are seeing that the Bible has reviewed everything. It has given us this chart that when we look at it, or oh, it is a compass, when you look at it, we are sure that we have a more sure word of prophecy. We don't need to, to, to guess at anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Bible says so. True, true. So when you, we come to the book of Revelation, I think we've talked about the Sunday law, the mark of the beast, and people are just saying, what are these things? Where are they taking these things from? And when you look at Revelation chapter 13, the whole Revelation chapter 13, it just talks about the two kingdoms. And which are these two kingdoms? The first kingdom is? Papal Rome. Yes, it's Papal Rome. The second kingdom is America. America. So we are looking at when you look at... That are in force currently. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you look at America right now, it is a superpower. Not so. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So they have that influence. That's why everywhere you go, if you have a dollar, you can do what? You, you can buy. You can buy. You can trade with a dollar. But when you go with a shilling, you'll have to exchange. At the border, you have to, go, you have you to, have to, to exchange. Do forex. Yes. And so when you look at verse uh, 16, it says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So it is saying that if you don't have this mark of the beast, out auza, out anunua, you won't buy, you won't sell. But verse 16 is very interesting. Because 16 it says, and he causeth all. So we'll be forced, just like people are forced right now. Mandates are coming yes, out. Yes, mandates are coming out. That if you don't have this, you cannot enter here, you cannot go there, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you cannot leave your house. So all Maybe those just things to, are coming. Just to, em to emphasize again, yes. though the mandates are coming, and mm -hmm. these mandates are for the pandemic, mm -hmm. like she said, this is a dress rehearsal mm -hmm. for what is yet future. Mm -hmm. So whatever is happening, uh, we could clearly deduce, whatever is happening in the pandemic is most likely going to happen when the National Sunday law is being enforced. Mm -hmm. So when you look at 16, he's saying that, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So we are seeing there are just two groups there. They, there is no middle class. Have they said that they are going to cause both small, middle class, and rich? And great. Or are no. the great, or rich and poor. and poor. No, there's nothing like that. It's just rich and poor. Right now, the people who are bringing all this problem is the middle class. Because they're rich. They are the ones who are the owners of the uh, big empires. They are the, the owners of the companies. Now the middle class, they are the workers. Mm -hmm. The poor people, they're just there. Then they live one day at a time as God provides. They wake up, they don't even know where the food, the next meal is coming from. They depend upon God or they just pray, Mungu tutumie malaika tubete chakula. But the middle class, they're the ones who wake up early in the morning, go to work. And they are called what? By Jeremiah said, they are called what? <laughs> yes. They are called slaves. They are called slaves. That's so funny. We were just discussing <laughs> that, that um, for you to take leave, for you to, to go and even do ministry, mm -hmm. for you to, to travel if you want to go and, and see your parents, you have to ask for permission. You have to get leave. So we were just touching and saying that uh, there's a preacher called Jeremiah Davis who says that if you have to ask for permission to do the things you're supposed to do, a free man should do, then maybe you're a slave. So it's just it's funny how she's brought that in. Okay. So when you look at this, now the middle class, they are the ones who go to work. They are the accountants of this world. They are the doctors. They are the, all these professions. They are in the middle class. That's why you see now when things happen, they are the ones who are striking. They are the ones in the street demanding better pay and everything. Have you ever seen a rich man who owns companies going to demonstrate? Who demonstrates? By the way, have you seen a poor person? Ana even nguvu za kutembea. Aende kudemonstrate kufanya nini. Nothing. It's the middle class. So the problem is the middle class. So this middle class, it's either you struggle, you become rich, or you are pushed down. And this is the reality. And this is the truth of the matter. This pandemic has pushed a lot of people who are in the middle class. They've become poor. They've been pushed out to be poor. Because some of our friends and our brothers and sisters out there, they've lost their source of income. Others, because of whatever reasons, they cannot work anymore because of all these mandates that have been put. So we are seeing that when it talks about small and great, rich and poor, this, what is coming, the National Sunday Law, Aita Select Mutu, everyone is going to be in, whether you are rich or poor. The arm is strong enough to get everyone in, whether you are rich or poor. It does not matter your status in the society. You are just going to be on one group or the other. Either on the group of the rich or the poor or on the, on the group of the great or small. Or free and bound. So when you're looking at that no man might buy nor sell, it is talking about the money issues here. So that's why we started with money and the heart. Because when it comes to the issue of no buying nor selling, if I love money more than my God, what will I do? 
you you will indefinitely in, you will most definitely, most definitely take the mm. mark of the beast and I, I i i'm just seeing the way the the bible has put these words and that no man might buy nor sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and when you look at 16 it is talking about the right hand what does the right hand do work most of the people i think 90 percent of the world population they are right-handed very few are left-handed that's why the bible is using right hand because the right hand is the one that we use for working it is a strong hand that we have so this is people will receive the mark of the beast the right hand because of what because of work people are going to do that because of they want to work they want to feed their family they want money so they will do that and others they're going to receive it in the forehead in the forehead yes they know the truth but because they believe that this thing is going to help them Cindy, mm. then they will receive it so maybe just something about the youtube link at the bottom there yes there is a clear distinct distinction ministry mm -hmm. so when you look at that um, youtube uh, the link that i've put there you you understand more about whatever we are discussing here because it is detailed and he explained step by step using the bible and you'll be using your own bible at home and following to see if this person is saying the truth or if there's something amiss so you can just follow that link because the time that we have is short we cannot expound we cannot say everything uh, in just this session so you can just go and check out that link Mm -hmm. As we move on, we see this man who he, he's called Carl Rov. He was telling somebody about him being a, a, a part of some elite group that make the history of this world. As we can see from the quote that he has written, that we are now an empire. Maybe I could ask uh, Sheila. Sheila to read the quote. Okay, it says that we are now an empire. We are an empire now. And when we act, we create our own reality. And while you are studying, uh, you are studying the, that reality judiciously, as you will, we will act again, creating other new realities, which you can study too. And that's how things will sort out. Yes, and then he further says, he, he further says, we are history, we are history's actors, and you all of you will be will be left to just study what we do. Yeah, it's like we do catch up on what has already been said. Mm -hmm. he, he, in a way, is saying that nothing happens by coincidence mm -hmm. on the world stage. Mm -hmm. Things are pre-planned, mm -hmm. and so uh, we can deduce something from what he has said. So we've been talking about this Great Reset. On the Great Reset, on the WFE, World Economic Forum's website, this is their, uh, what when you, when you type in there and to want to see what is on their web, uh, website, this is how it comes out, that there is an initiative that we need to do and, and capitalize on what the pandemic, the crisis has, provided to us that we should not just let it go we should come from this what's happening on the left mm -hmm. of the of the screen mm -hmm. and get to what is happening on the right of the screen and there's a time magazine article that pointed out that when you go to october 20, 2020 yes well well before uh, the the elections of America, uh, America. Mm -hmm. this article said that it, it what? prophesied yes. that Joe Biden would win the election. Mm -hmm. And from that time, it is like we do time travel. Let's go to when? 2020. It's 2023. <laughs> Here's how we fix the global economy. And surely you can find this in the, in the, on the internet and read it all and find out that it is the year 2023. This person is writing now from hindsight. Mm -hmm. He's gone to 2023 looking back. The COVID-19 uh, pandemic has come to an end and the global economy is on its path to recovery. How did you get here in 2023? 
how did the economy and society evolve to overcome the greatest crisis of our age? That preempts some preset mm -hmm. things. And so when we go back to the great reset agenda to understand this World Economic Forum people who have sat down and are trying to see what uh, is their main agenda. Their main agenda is to have one united global economy, mm -hmm. which, has, which is three-pronged. And the first one is to steer the market toward fairer outcomes. And I would not read it all. You go down there, you see, and create conditions for a stakeholder economy. And they have put the stakeholder economy in quotes because they have their own definition of what stakeholder economy is. Maybe just to preempt, it is who the stakeholders are in, a, in any business. The customer, mm. the, 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 the one who is doing the business, and there's this thing that, is, that has come up not, not so far in the past. CSR, what does that mean? Uh, corporate social responsibility. Yes, mm -hmm. for the community now, the community where the business is. Mm. So corporates would be the ones who largely drive the stakeholder economy. So to create a condition where the corporates thrive. And corporates are actually the members of the uh, World Economic Forum. So that is, uh, when, when we go to number two, it is to ensure that we advance shared goals. That is their second, such as equality and sustainability. Uh, this means, for example, building green urban infrastructure and creating incentives for industries to, implement, to improve their track record on ESGs, environmental, social, and governance metrics. This is a metric that is used on the, and also now here you, you don't find small companies. It is again corporates. Mm -hmm. So it is like many of the people who come to World Economic Forum are the corporates. And so they are saying, if you do not uh, get to the merits, you fall off. Mm -hmm. you can't, you can't, we, you, we, your business does not have our shared goals. Mm -hmm. So you fall off, you can't manage. And through the pandemic, we have seen so many small businesses fall off by themselves, mm -hmm. shed off mm -hmm. by themselves. And so the corporates shall remain the big conglomerates and, and stuff like that. And thirdly, the, the third prong for how to approach the Great Reset so that we can actualize it is to harness the innovations of the fourth industrial revolution to support the public good, especially by addressing health and social challenges. You can imagine what would be possible if similar concerted efforts were made in every sector, in every sector of life. Whatever has been done on health, through this pandemic and uh, in our social challenges through this pandemic also if all this were, were now like where, when you are being told that uh, money is uh, you can't touch money money is going to transfer uh, the, the disease to, from person to person we need to check out and ensure that we use M-Pesa M-Pesa is an innovation of 4IR, 4IR, mm -hmm. and 4IR is a vehicle that is going to be very um, well used into the future. Into now that we are going into the reset, to be to to be an enabler for that economy that you're talking about. The whole idea here is to make this economy shrink, 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 or implode, and then get another economy because we are an, we are in an economy that is uh, governed by market forces mm -hmm. demand and supply i sell anything you, you buy anything isn't it mm -hmm. but there's coming a time when you cannot buy anything at whatever cost mm -hmm. or you cannot sell anything at whatever cost if you do not have the mark of the beast how will that economy come through this great reset I find it interesting that the main thing about the one of the key things about the fourth 
industrial revolution is that we are moving towards a more tech society. Yes. Yeah. That we are becoming more technological and everything is is going like you say cashless, paperless, you know. Mm -hmm. We are we are living our lives um more on more, running more on technology. And it just makes me think immediately of China and their credit score. Aha. Mm -hmm. You see, yes. because then you you have your money mm -hmm. and you're paying your rent and everything mm -hmm. but if you if you don't meet the minimum yeah. requirements of the of the, the social mm -hmm. the social credit score rating, mm -hmm. so, rating yeah yes. the social rating then you actually can't live in certain neighborhoods even if you can afford it mm -hmm. but if you don't meet a certain rating you can't live there mm -hmm. yeah. and they have cameras and they, they they track where you go and what you're buying and what your spending habits are so it's just interesting that um this is what the fourth revolution is, mm -hmm. what technology can do. And technology is very, it, it's good. I mean, that's how people are watching at home. Mm -hmm. But it also has its elements where we can control. Mm. We can even control the elements like buying and, and selling. Mm. Mm. In the book that uh, the leader of World Economic Forum, uh, Mr. Klaus, Klaus Schwab, Professor Klaus mm -hmm. Schwab, mm -hmm. he wrote a book recently saying, uh, Many of us are pondering when things will return to normal. The short response is never. Never. We will not return to, to normal. In the book, it is stated so. And so we are in a time when uh, we have started, so to speak, like we read already in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 8. Mm -hmm. These are the beginnings of soul. Mm -hmm. So. And it's put well in Matthew because, you know, some of us are thinking, but but um, Boris Johnson has ended COVID, you know, with what happened in the UK. And he was like, we are not masking. We are going to trust the British people. Mm -hmm. So it looks, it, it begins to give the impression that this issue of COVID is, is, um, has come to, has an, come end. to an end. Mm -hmm. But even if COVID has come to an end or it has not come to an end, the point is that the Bible calls it birth pains. Yes. That something happens and then there is reprieve. And then something worse happens, and then there is reprieve. reprieve. And like you said, it keeps going towards a, a crescendo. Yeah. Yeah. And now, here there was a slide that uh, came out in 2020, and that is telling us uh, about death, disease, deaths per day worldwide: tuberculosis, 3,014; uh, hepatitis B, 2,400. Okay and something so come down that list until you get covid 19 coronavirus this is what collapsed the world economy now from hindsight we shall say so now when we get to that point into the future where we see actually this happen we shall say ah that is so there was some some hidden agenda behind these things behind yeah so the was the disease legitimate as people got sick and died uh -huh. but were the the way that the governments responded, the way governments are responding even even now, even today, yes, you know, mm -hmm. it 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 doesn't speak of a of a, it's it feels a bit heavy handed. Yes, let me, let me put it like mm -hmm. that. Yes, yeah. But at the beginning, initially, there was a lot of panic. Nobody knew how how difficult it was it would be. But at the moment where we are and we have the benefit of of hindsight, mm -hmm. then we can project such things and ask such mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. Yeah. And now, like this gentleman is saying. You never want to a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean is that in an opportunity is an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Mm -hmm. So from the way he has um, he's he's coming out, mm -hmm. he shows there is something more than what we are seeing in face at face value. Mm -hmm. So if we are people who discern, it would be good for us. Mm -hmm. isn't it just to draw up a parallel it, it's just good for us like uh, not to forget history i keep i was telling her i keep telling uh, my children that it is not normal to be searched when you go into a building you know they have grown up in an era where to walk into a building you have to be to searched. be searched but we grew up in a world where you walked into a building yeah, yeah you are not searched in yes. fact the most they would do is ask you what is your name and where you're going but now they they search you and, in some and buildings, it is normal. They you just raise your retain, hands. Yeah, they even retain your ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this, this, these things were not normal. So for me, when I look on the, on the larger scale, you know, now not specifically at the current pandemic, but on the larger scale, you can see systematically the issue of freedoms. 
that first you have to be mm. searched to mm. enter a building. Now they search you, body search, you know, they actually search frisk you. you they well. frisk your person, mm. you know. So the, the, your, your personal rights are, are shrinking. shrinking. Yes. And then now be, for you to go to a certain state, mm -hmm. you have to have, uh, talking about Canada, for example, mm. for you to go to a certain state, you need to have um, a certain, uh, some things are mandated, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just painting, broad stroke, yeah, nothing specific. But it is painting a picture where systematically rights are being uh, withdrawn. Yes. Right. And as and sorry, as the rights are being withdrawn, the mark of the beast cannot gain momentum when with liberty of conscience alive and well. Mm. I wrote, I got that statement from somewhere and I and it actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. Looking at the whole scenario of the way things are, yes. The mark of the beast cannot gain ascendancy. Mm -hmm with liberty of conscience mm. alive and well. Mm. This liberty of conscience needs to shrink. And that link that um, um, Sheila pointed out to from, from Clear Word, uh, distinction. Clear Distinctions Ministry, mm. he speaks a lot about liberty, uh, liberty of conscience. Of conscience. Mm. Liberty of conscience is something that we need to guard jealously. jealously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, even Reforms on One did a series um, a while back talking about Society for Liberty, talking about liberties and how systematically through history people mm -hmm. have fought for their liberties, but we have forgotten. Mm -hmm. We have we, we mm -hmm. don't know our history. We have forgotten. Yeah, forgotten. And, yeah, and now we don't take our liberty as as sacredly as we should. Mm. Sheila, you were saying yes. Uh, when you're looking at all these things that are happening, they're just pointing us to one thing. Mm. that Jesus is even at the door. Mm. Because all these things, they are written in the Bible and they are taking place to wake us up. By the way, God allows some of these things for our own oh, good. Oh, good. Because we were sleeping. By the way, everyone was sleeping. But when the pandemic hit, all of a sudden, everyone was waking up mm -hmm. saying, oh, so it can be true that you cannot walk past this time. You are restricted that by 7 p.m. you have to be in the house. If you're not in the house, there were people who were beaten to death. There were people who were arrested. So all those, you see the liberty that we take for granted. For granted. It was just overnight mm -hmm. withdrawn, mm -hmm. just like that. Mm -hmm. A ton of vigilance is the price of liberty. Yes. <laughs> There's uh, an American statesman who said that. Now, on the slide that we're, watch, we're looking at now, it talks about uh, BlackRock and Vanguard are, are less than a decade away from mm -hmm. managing... 20, 20, trillion. 20 trillion shillings. Dollars. Dollars. I, I don't know why I look. I, li I, li I love my shilling. <laughs> so, trillion dollars. I don't know how much that money is, but it is staggering. Mm -hmm. This is more than, it's, it's basically a big percentage of, a big percentage, a big chunk. I don't, I, I don't want to put a figure, but it is a big percentage of the world's economy. Mm -hmm. Global economy mm -hmm. that is going to be, to be under only two companies. Yes, in and fact, they were saying that 99%, the 1% are holding what 99% of the world can have. Yes. So it's just 1% having the wealth of the whole world, 1%. Mm -hmm. mm. Just to clarify, that's talking about the global population. Yes. But we have the people who are called uh, the 99% mm -hmm. and then we have the 1%. One, the 1%. But even in the 1%, we have it's 99%. And then we have the 1% mm -hmm. of the 1%. Yes. Mm -hmm. These now are the super, super wealthy. wealthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to be in the 1%, mathematically speaking, mm -hmm. but we are not in the 1% one of the 1%. Of the 1%. <laughs> now, also, we, uh, we, are, we will talk about the 1% or the 1% here shortly. Mm -hmm. But SOP, I mean, the, the spirit of prophecy, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which we call SOP, has this quote to say from uh, um, Country, Country Living, Living, page 10. Paragraph three, it says, the work of the people of God is to prepare for the events of the future, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which will soon come upon them with blinding force as an overwhelming surprise. Mm -hmm. In the world, okay. gigantic monopolies will be formed. Men will bind themselves together in unions that will, ra will wrap them in the folds of the enemy. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in a certain, line, certain lines of business. Tread Trade unions will be formed, and those who refuse to join these unions will be marked men. Mm -hmm. And this is the little flock of God who are preparing for the events of the future. Mm -hmm. So I pray that each one of us endeavors to be in that flock.
And this is the 1% of the 1% who are the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the Morgan and the JP Morgan, Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan family. Mm -hmm. And two or three others. And two or three others, perhaps, mm -hmm. who, would, who would be in it. Now, looking at, as we wind up, money and the heart, that is actually now where we have reached. Yes, money and the heart, the, the gist matter. of the matter. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, we, are, we, we know that. Uh, Matthew 20, Matthew, Matthew 6, 6, verse 4, 24. Matthew 6, 24, mm -hmm. it says, mm -hmm. no, no man can save two masters, mm -hmm. for either he will hate the one mm -hmm. and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot save God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mm -hmm. You cannot serve God and mammon. In Matthew 24, verse 15 to 18, we shall not, we shall not read it. It talks about the time of, of when, when the abomination of desolation is set up, which is National Sunday Law. Mm -hmm. When you hear it, if you're on the rooftop, don't, you don't come down. down. Yeah, and you, you, you come down from the rooftop and run away. Don't go to the house to pick anything. Mm -hmm. Meaning you have no attachments to whatever is inside the house. Mm -hmm. Save your life, save your skin, go run. Mm -hmm. And that, that actually happened in 70, 70 AD. The ones who did that were saved. 70 AD, the event then was the destruction of Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah. So here we have reached a point in time when we need to actually evaluate ourselves. Do we have the love of money like this gentleman who is actually caressing his dollars? <laughs> For the love of money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. which while some coveted after, they err of the uh, they have erred from the faith. That is very important to note mm -hmm. and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Mm -hmm. And as we see the quote that uh, my sister pointed out for want of food and clothing, mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. shall be shall 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 be ensnared. And as we see here, this is a call for us to be like Noah. Noah, after all is said and done. Mm -hmm. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, chapter 17, verse 26, um, I'm at it here already. Mm -hmm. It says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the, days of, in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they gave in marriage, they were given in marriage until the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, it, it, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they did drink, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone, and brimstone until from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Mm -hmm. Very solemn and very important for us who are watching for that second coming of Jesus mm -hmm. to be like Lot. In the yellow words, they are written, all that um, like he Noah, to be like, to be like Noah, Noah, all that, all he, that possessed, he possessed, he invested in the ark. What did he invest in the ark? His energy, his well, money, time, his time, time everything. everything about his life. Mm -hmm. So likewise are we to do so, that we may make it to that kingdom. Mm -hmm. If we do not invest in in the, in knowing the things of the end time and we shall be like those who are left out. Mm -hmm. This is no time for business as usual. This is time for business unusual. To do things that, are, that seem, that seem mad, like madness to the people of this world. Mm -hmm. Because we have a heaven to gain and a world to lose. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. There's, a, there's one slide that we want to look at. It is, called, it is talking about the common good. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at whatever the world is doing today, maybe you can just go back. When you look at whatever the world is doing through today, it is bringing us to this point. When you look at this book, it is a catechism of the Catholic Church. And on the point 2188, if you have this book, kindly, you can read it. It says, in respecting religious liberty and the common good of all, Christians should seek recognition of Sundays and, and the churches 
and the church's holy days as a legal holiday. So when you're looking at what is happening during the pandemic, they are saying you have to do this. You have to get jabbed for the common good. Because for the sake of your elderly people at home, your children, your loved one, go and get pricked. You have to be pricked because you are going to be traveling for the common good. So we are seeing that this common good is encompassing every part of our lives. And what is behind the common good? Where do we find this phrase coming from? When you look at the Pope, he's talking about common good. When you look at Cloud Schwab, he's talking about the common good. When you look at all the leaders of this world, they are talking about the common good. And they'll tell you, do this for the common good, for the common good of society. So as individuals, when we are seeing this, we are looking at the way marks towards our heavenward journey because we are seeing that the Sunday law, it's the last drama. It's the last act in the drama before Jesus Christ comes. Amen. Amen. Um, my thoughts on the last slide that, that we, we on had. Noah, mm -hmm. on Noah and Lot. You know, there's people ask you, what is your greatest fear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My greatest fear is that my children will be lost. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that is my greatest fear, that my children would be lost. Mm -hmm. So I find it very solemn because when we think about what happened in Noah's time, or when we think about what happened in, in Lot's, Lot's time, time. Mm -hmm. we make it, we, we forget that it was not only the adult 50 year old men who were destroyed mm -hmm. it was everybody mm -hmm. and for me they, they thought that i could be not careful they thought that i may not be be dotting my t's and uh, dotting my i's and crossing my t's just to ensure the salvation of my children mm -hmm. it's it's terrifying because judgment is coming judgment is, judgment coming, is sure. coming and, mm -hmm. and our children will have to be ready to stand and, they, and our children need to have a faith that will go through the time of trouble. And we, as, our, as the parents, we, we cannot teach them. them what we ourselves mm -hmm. do not know. Mm -hmm. We cannot give them a love for the Lord. If we ourselves have only a superficial knowledge of, of who he is. Anyway, so our time is up. It is 60 minutes. We just want to, to beg the audience 10 more minutes to answer some questions. Uh, now I will not ask all of them. But um, the first one that, that uh, we have is, why should we do all these things? Because God can see my heart. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Where can? Why should, you know, why, why are you making it? It sounds like works. It sounds like we should do this and we should do this. It sounds like, like works. Can you imagine but if God Noah didn't? God can see my heart. Exactly. No, no, God can see your heart. Imagine you're Noah. God has told you, build an ark. And then God can see your heart. You want to be on the safe side and you don't build the ark. Then the, <laughs> the, flood <laughs> comes. the flood comes. That's actually why another ark to build, mm -hmm. a flood is coming. Those ones are not there for no, for no reason. Mm -hmm. The ark we are to build is our characters that will enable us to, to first our characters, even before we go into other things like mm -hmm. uh, country living and all. Mm -hmm. First, our characters to be ready to meet and see God for who He is and how He is, mm -hmm. isn't it? Those who will, those who will survive through this time are the ones who have that ark built. Like Noah built the ark. Read verse seven. By Noah, by faith, <laughs> yeah, by Noah, by faith, <laughs> Noah, being warned of. God of the, of things not yet seen, just like us, we don't see these seen. things yet, mm -hmm. isn't it? Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the, to the saving of his house, by the which mm -hmm. he condemned the world, and being heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So we are not doing. It is righteousness by faith which mm -hmm. should come out by the works that we do. Mm -hmm. We are not doing them, so we're not, we don't do to things, God. or rather even, you don't do so that you can be saved. You are mm -hmm. saved so that you can you do. Can do. Mm -hmm. Yes. The next uh, question is, will the financial crisis be before or after the Sunday law? I think there was a little confusion, just to clarify that. Mm -hmm. This thing called the big one, the great financial crisis. May it will it be, <laughs> yes, will it be before or after the Sunday law? Last week, um, uh, our friend Vincent 
went through the history of the crashes beginning in 1929. Mm -hmm. The Great Depression went through, through. Even to date, we still have people who are talking about uh, the, the the bubble of mm -hmm. 2007 and, eight. and eight. eight. Yes, mm. and eight. So there are others that we expect even now, and this will be there. There are cycles of mm -hmm. that come and go, come and go. But there is one. I think it is in Revelation 18. I didn't quite get the verse that around 18 verse 11. I think that talks about. The economy crashing like a like somebody a, mill a millstone thrown in the water. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate one, which will come after the Sunday law. Sunday law that first passes in America as national Sunday law, then this that we've just been talking about, mm -hmm. then it would be made worldwide. Universal. Universal. Just like the way we are talking about the pandemic being a, a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Just like the way. Uh, it spread throughout the whole world within no time. So likewise, it shall spread again throughout the whole world within no time. That all countries will be speaking the same thing until you wonder eh, how all countries have said lockdown. Ah, lockdown. All countries have said quarantine. Oh, quarantine. Mm -hmm. Likewise, National Sunday Law shall be the same thing. All right. And National Sunday Law leads to national apostasy. Oh, pa apostasy first, then. National ruin. National ruin. National now that ruin is what we're talking about, which will be now the ultimate, and we shall never recover from it. All right. So for Sheila, I am not in a position to move to the country. Am I lost? Not really. Uh, if you're not in the position, you know God knows what you need. The first thing that you need to know is that uh, going to the country is not that you're going to be saved at the time you've reached the country, then you are saved. No. Just like when you are an Adventist, it's not a passport that you are definitely automatically you're going to go to heaven. But what you need to do is that if you are not in the country, you have to pray about it. You have to ask God that he should open up the way so that you can have the money and you can purchase that land. But you need to start living like you're in the country. If you are a person who buys everything, you run to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. You need tissue, you run to the supermarket. You need onion, you run to Mama Mboga. You need everything. You, your, 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 your life is from home, Mama Mboga, supermarket, work. Home, mom, that one, it's going to be a problem because we have already seen that there's, a, there's trouble that is brewing in the horizon. And before we know it, it will just burst. So what we need to do, Start practicing country living where you are, right where you are. You can be in an apartment, you can, be, you can be have your own compound. Just start planting. You can even start with the onion. Just buy onion, sprig onion, cut the front, use the leaves, get the root, put it in water. It will start germinating. You could have saved something. The money that you used to buy onion, even if it's 10 bob, that money can help you. You can start saving. You can start even planting get a sack, put some soil, dunga skuma moja po, put skuma and start eating just in the apartment. That one is going to, one, it's going to help us to save some money mm -hmm. that we could have given it to someone. Because you cannot see this small, small um, amount of money like 10 bob, 20 bob. But if you can keep that money even for a week or a month, you're going to see that you spend a lot of money in those small, small things. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, then you do a step of faith. Just pray to God. God is going to open up a way. There are many people who have God has opened a way and they are now in the country or they've purchased a piece of land. Because when you read Country Living, Ellen White was shown that those who own a piece of land, they are kings and queens. Yeah. And then, of course, the reality that you could be living in the country, but your heart is not there. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Your heart is in there. In the, in the city. city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, um, must everyone move to the country? Some should remain to preach. Can some remain to preach? Uh, okay, Peter? <laughs> uh, on that, I would, I, would, I would say it like Enoch. Enoch was a type of the people of the end. Mm -hmm. A type of people of the end who will be translated. Meaning, mm -hmm. 
You're the one who simplifies words. <laughs> <laughs> um, that they will go to, to heaven, heaven without, without testing. dying. Yes, without testing death. Without testing death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get. So as an as 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 um an example of a, mm-hmm. of the people of the end time, he stayed in the countryside and he went to the city to evangelize mm-hmm. and tell people about the coming doom. Mm-hmm. Enoch, if he could have been alive, he would have been with Noah in the, in the ark. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Yes. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. But now God translated him before the doom came. Mm-hmm. And the doom for our time that is coming is now not water. Mm-hmm. Is Jesus second coming with all rivers flowing backwards and a lot of disaster coming when Jesus at Jesus second coming, which is not rapture, which every eye shall see him mm-hmm. and he shall pick those who are his to take them to heaven. Mm-hmm. So Enoch should serve as our good example. For the people who will be translated without seeing death and we are living at that time when uh when we talk about city evangelism we are not sup- we are not uh, don't, we, yeah we are not supposed to dwell in the city to evangelize, evangelize the city yes evangelize the city we would we would do best to ourselves to dwell in the countryside and evangelize the city ourselves and our children Amen. Yes. In fact, when you're looking at when you're talking about country living, mm. it's not only to prepare for what is coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, country living, living is also to prepare us spiritually, mm. because you know when you're in the cities, there are so many things that mm. are distracting you. Mm-hmm. But when you're out there in the country, your mind is clear. You are just seeing the handwork of God. That one is preparing us to meet our Lord in peace. Yes, so it would be better to prepare our characters in the country and it would be much easier than we're in the middle of confusion and the middle of the city. Sure. All right. Um, my spouse is not on board. What should I do? Wow. Uh, <laughs> spouse not on board. Who wants to go first? Okay, the first thing that you need to do is to pray. Because it's only God that can change or can convict the heart. Because him is the one, he's the creator. So when you pray, God is going to intervene in that situation. Amen. Because and he are, does. And he surely does. Yes. Because there are many people who have given testimonies whereby the wife was not on board or the husband. You see, the, there are times whereby the wife wants to go to the country. The husband is saying, no, sasa tutaka ajeuko. We leave all these good things of the city. There are times whereby the husband wants to go, the wife is not on board. So the first step is to pray. When you pray, you lay it at the feet of Jesus because Jesus is the one who created that husband. Jesus is the one who created the wife. So when you pray, you're going to be saved like Noah. Because when you look at the Bible, whatever is written in the Bible, it is for our example. You look at these two families, the family of Lot and the family of Noah. Which one do you want to be in? Do you want to be in the family of Lot, whereby Lot was saved alone? Because the Bible says so. The daughters that he left with, they were also lost, including the wife. But look at Noah. Noah was saved together with his family. So as we are going to the country, we are not leaving someone behind. We are praying that by God's grace, we go as a family. We go as a family. But if the waste comes to the waste, in case... All things that we've talked about, they, they are happening. Everything, you are seeing the lead flags there, there, there. You have to discuss with your spouse. You tell him where we've reached. Can we purchase a piece of land in the country? Don't do it secretly. You buy land be, without his knowledge because, or without her knowledge. When she'll get wind of that, she'll be even more upset. It's better to inform. But get a piece of land out of the city. What I would emphasize on the point would be that as much as you pray, do something Mm -hmm. towards getting to the the country. country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think on my end, the questions that I had are finished. Maybe you just give final remarks and then we pray. Sheila? Okay. So when you're talking about money and the heart, The Bible says you cannot love money and love God at the same time. So the level of loving God, money can be a small God. Uh, 
whereby the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not have any other God before me. So what we need to do, money is not evil. Let's make this clear. God wants us to have that money because it's the money that we use to buy all these things that we need. But we need not to love money more than God. When Christ is in our heart, is the hope of glory. So let's allow Christ to come into our hearts and make residence so that whatever things that we are doing, it should be drawing us closer to God. That even if he blesses us with money, let that money be a means, be food for the for the for, for the hungry, be uh, clothes for those who are not who are not having anything to put on, be a, a model whereby it is going to uplift Jesus in everything that we do. At the end of the day, we can have all these things. We can know about the Sunday law. We can know about country living. But if we don't have Jesus in us, all those things are in vain. So let's surrender. Let's ask Jesus Christ to come into our hearts that he can, first of all, change our hearts that we may look like him. Because when you read, I'm just going to quote, there's a book called Christ Object Lesson. It was written by Ellen G. White. It is Christ Object Lesson page 179, 169, paragraph 1, it says that when Christ, when the character of Christ mm -hmm. shall be fully revealed in us, then he will come and claim us as his own. So it is the character of Christ that is supposed to be revealed in us. When it is revealed in us, then Jesus is going to come and claim us to be his own. Why has Jesus not come? Because when he looks at me, when he looks at Magoma and he looks at my brother Peter, he does not see his character in him. So he's giving us this time that we can look like him so that he can come and claim us as his own. In finishing, I would just like to encourage the viewers to get this book, The Great Controversy, which started in heaven and which we are in, even mm -hmm. uh, uh, presently, that talks a lot about the current situation we are in, the way marks, the, the, the chart uh, that show our way marks are written here in more detail. Mm -hmm. Like what we are seeing here now, uh, there is a quote here I would like us to, there is a page, page 581. God's word has given warning to, of the impending danger. Let this be an let this be unheeded, and the Protestant world will learn what the purposes of, the, of Rome really are. Only when it is too late to escape the snare, she is silently growing into power. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, in the churches, and in the hearts of men. She is piling up her lofty and massive structures in, um, in the secret recesses of which her former persecutions will be repeated. Stealthily and unsuspectedly, she is strengthening her forces to further her own ends. When the time shall come for her to strike, all that she desires is vantage ground, and this is already being given her. We shall soon see and shall feel what the purpose of the Roman element is. Whoever shall believe and obey the word of God will thereby incur reproach and persecution. So as we wind up, it is very important for us to stick to liberty of conscience and that which uh, Martin Luther and the early reformers did stand for as Protestants. As we wind up, I exhort every one of us to get a copy of this and read and understand and keep the faith. Thank you. I'll ask you to pray for us. Let us pray. Our dear loving Father, we come before your throne of grace this moment, grateful for this time that you have given us so that we could understand the issues, current issues that are going on about the Great Reset. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may keep us steadfast in the faith. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may enable us to have an, an hunger for righteousness, which you have surely said, you shall, you shall fulfill as we uh, wind up, be with us and even the viewers, and take us on to greater heights of knowing you until we see you face to face. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.